This time on Whatever We Want, we talk about The Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 3, The Streets of Mos Espa. Spoilers, major huge big spoilers are ahead. There are time codes down in the description. If you would like to jump around, we talk everything from uh, potential Ahsoka series tie-ins all the way to Danny Trejo's tacos. So, yeah, enjoy! Pretty good. Daniel, how you doing, my friend? Dude, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Been streaming. Everyone Dude, I've check been out streaming Daniel's a lot. stream. It's uh, it's linked below. It's been linked below for the past couple episodes. But yeah, he's making his own game. It's actually really exciting and uh, definitely really interesting. You should check it out. But not now because we're in the middle of a podcast. Yeah, listen to us top- now. Talk about Star Wars stuff. Yes. Jake, what are we talking about today? Wait, before we get there, I wanted to oh, okay. bring it back to Marvel <laughs> because I thought it was really interesting. We talked about Spider-Man No Way Home a couple episodes ago. Yeah. And I was just thinking, remember our very first episode of this podcast was talking about Spider-Man Far From Home when that came out. So mm-hmm. so I think that's crazy. Just like that's been like circle. now 2019. And yeah, like that full circle kind of closeness. And we had um, Ringo on the podcast and there's cool time with him. So it's just cool to see how far we've come, you know? Yeah. I was also thinking, so for a little peek behind the curtain here. For those that don't know, Daniel and I, when we start this, we literally just sit in silence for 30 seconds with the audio recording so we can get room tone because it helps me, like, make the audio editing easier. But I was thinking, Mm -hmm. like, we sit in 30 seconds of room tone for every episode. This is episode 81. So we've sat in silence for this podcast for, like, 40 minutes. (laughs) Just sitting in (laughs) silence. (laughs) Oh, dude, that's so funny. That's kind of wild, honestly. You know, those are, like, You should should do, like, a compilation of us just, like, sitting there awkwardly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just seeing, just flashing through like different just, outfits yeah, yeah exactly. well, if, if you like, guys uh, leave a comment if you want a release the release the silent cut it's like a quiet place part three and it's just us a combination of awkwardly. all of us for, it's a 40 minute video which is about the length of some of these podcasts so it's just a full silent podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes we uh, dance a little bit anyways that, enough about that are you ready to jump into the introductions we can get into yes. the topic of the week all right you may want us to talk about this or that, but we don't care. We're going to talk about whatever we want. Blab, welcome back to Whatever You Want, the podcast where we, Jake and Daniel, two devilishly hinged gentlemen, talk about movies and TV shows, giving behind-the-scenes insights, filmmaking techniques, all that jazz, and more. We do care what you want us to talk about. I'm actually considering changing the jingle. Just things have been busy recently. Um, I feel like changing the jingle would be fine. Um, yeah. I feel like we should keep the name, but like change the jingle. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to rebrand everything. Yeah, definitely thinking about doing some... Some brand changes, like like yeah. some the jingle and some of the segments and stuff. I don't know, just keeping an eye open. But speaking of changes, this seems like a change, but it's back to our roots, where it's just you and me, Daniel. So it's good to be back with you again, my friend. Nice to be back with you, dude. Dude. Yeah. I was going to say dude, dude. and that's two. Uh. <laughs> it's me, dude. So, Daniel's dude. <laughs> I'm just uh, your hair. Speaking of hair, you got your uh, Patagonia hat on. Yeah, I have my hat on because I need to get a haircut and like... Like, it, my hair looks good, you know, like, coming out of the hat, you know, for those of you on YouTube, like, it's, it's getting there, getting long, yeah. it has, like, the curl out, you know, yeah. underneath is, let's not talk about that Bald, right bald, bald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that might All actually right. be better, though. I might, I, I actually thought about it a while ago, because, like, you know. Not going bald, like, buzz cutting it? No, like, like shaving it all, and then letting me, wow. like, start from scratch, because I've always had hair. When I was born, yeah, yes. I was, like, a full freaking monkey. Dude, you should do like an angsty, like I'm having a crisis and just like shave your whole head off, like in like a teen movie or something. I think we're saying like, see, it's just in the middle. Yeah. It's like like an reverse anti-mohawk. Mohawk. Yeah. yeah. The anti-mohawk. <laughs> Anyways, we've been rambling enough. Let's jump into the seg- what we're talking about this week. So Boba Fett, chapter three, the streets of Mos Espa. What were your overall thoughts? I thought it was a good episode. Um, I'm trying to compare really? it to the other episodes, but it was. This is my least favorite out of all of them. It had, it had its moments. Yeah, I mean, I like, okay, I, okay, I like that, what was it, uh, Danny, uh, what's his last name? Danny Trejo? The, the, yeah, Trejo, the machete. Like, he just came out of nowhere, and I was like, what the hell yeah, is he doing the, here? The it's Rancor like the, Trainer? The Rancor Trainer. Like, well, he's a longtime heck? collaborator. Danny Trejo is actually a longtime collaborator with Robert Rod- Rodriguez, the director of this episode and the first episode. So it's cool that he kind of brought him in. And I think he, like, he's very believable as, like, a Rancor Trainer. Like, he's got that, oh, like, definitely. rough to him. Um, and also... He, I, he's more fit than the last uh, Rancor trainer from episode yeah, six. Yeah, that's true, because that, that guy was freaking like, 
Oh, yeah. oh my baby. Oh, you know, like. Yeah, no offense, but it, it looks like he had already gone through like depression of losing another Rancor child. And yeah. So I don't know what this one did to him. I, I'm worried. He's, he's going to get his own spinoff show. <laughs> yeah, like keeping up with the Rancor <laughs> keepers. The Rancor like, man. The Kardashians. Do, do, yeah. do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> just epic Star Wars music. It's just this guy sitting on a couch just like, with a picture hung up on the wall of like the Rancor. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, my baby, my child. <laughs> the child. <laughs> it's then <thankful. laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, yeah. So I, I overall. So you, you said you liked it, but like compared to that, yeah, like, like it was moments like that that made me like it more. Is what I'm trying to say. You yeah, no, I, mean? I completely agree. I, I originally when I was writing these notes down, I was like, I didn't really like this episode, and that's kind of what I said. And then when I kind of went back and kind of skimmed through to take some more notes, I realize that there's a lot of good parts in it and i liked a lot of the individual aspects but i don't think it worked together well as like a whole episode yeah if that makes I any agree. sense no no because there's a lot of key points that are going on both like past and present like there yeah. was like like in the in the flashback right which we didn't start off with this time we start off with the the present like regular yeah present stuff i don't know why i couldn't the, think of the word the present huts. but <laughs> yeah but yeah but no but when, when we finally got to that flashback right I mean, it's, it's kind of setting it up for, like, okay, the Tuscans kind of got wiped out. Now yeah. he's going to have to deal with the Pikes. And then we kind of the predicted f- some of that last week. Sorry, you go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, but now we're also seeing the, the problem with the Pikes in the present as well. So I see it. I'm, yeah. just, I'm kind of seeing, like, what they're trying to do with, like, the duality there and try to set up, like, the interactions that he's had with the Pikes in the past. His past can catch he- up to him. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. It, 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 I agree with you. Like, it didn't, might not have hit the same. There's, so, there's too many keys, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's tough not to, like, compare this series to Mandalorian, but I feel like this series, like, Mandalorian had a very clear goal, like, um, spoilers for Mandalorian if you haven't seen that, but, like, uh, in the first season, like, he immediately gets Grogu, like, Baby Yoda at the end of the first episode, and then his goal is clear to, like, he wants to, like, find out what happened, what, where this child came from, and then eventually, like, get it to a Jedi, that's, like, the goal, which makes me a little worried and, like, honestly excited about what they're gonna do for the next season now that that's not the goal anymore um but this one i don't know exactly what the goal is like it's we're exploring his past which taking up a lot of time but like in the present i guess his goal is to just be like a good like daimyo i guess like crime boss like java and it's kind of convoluted compared to mandalorian that's what i was bringing up last time before we were talking about like the moral stance of him right like yeah because we don't really know what his motives are like what he's really after in a way I mean, right. we're getting a feeling like we want we know he wants to rule but we don't have any like reason as to why right that's something that breaks us apart from like Mandalorian, yeah. where we're like it was clear like mando was trying to make sure that the, you can get the child to safety and make sure it was taken care of i mean it's it's, it's natural in that sense right it takes over yeah. like paternal sense there um but in this it's like it's almost like he feels like he has to fit this role where he wants to fit this role but th- it, there's not really an explanation as to why he wants to fit that role I think this that's you know interesting. I mean? Your point made, made me think about, like, because Mandalorian is a new character, like, we had no idea or, like, expectations about his past, but because we know so much about Boba Fett already, we can kind of maybe connect some dots and try to connect dots, which might be where some confusion is coming from. Like, maybe I, I personally connected the dots. Like, he's been a bounty hunter his whole life and kind of, like, working for someone. So now I feel like he's trying to, like, be like, all right, now I would like to climb and be at the top and have my own like sense of power and and be my own boss instead of working for someone else finally that's kind of where my idea is for why he might be doing this um but i don't know that's i don't know that's my point you don't know like no like that's yeah. the thing. This, this is not clear that's the that's the problem it's fine but anyways let's, let's get enough rambling let's get into the the meat of the episode um yes. and when i say the meat i mean the chunk of gamorian shoulder or neck or whatever that dude Santin took out he of freaking him. <laughs> just that he was going on a rampage man um yeah that was I a do, cool I, fight it, it was a cool fight but before we even get into that the bikers and like the yeah the cyborgs what, right. what do you think of the gang i honestly it's an interesting. It's a really interesting concept. Like when you look at it, like on paper, I think it's cool. But I'm not really the biggest fan of how they pull it off. And I feel like it's just because I'm used to like certain things in Tatooine, so I need to be open to more new ideas. But like, I really wasn't a big fan of like the super colorful bikes. Like it felt very out yeah. of place in Same. Star Wars. Like it honestly felt like 
like kids playing like with their dads like Star Wars stuff, and then they brought in like Power Ranger like bright and colorful like bike out of I mean, nowhere. I, I, I get was, the like, concept what? for like the chase scene because like yeah. the way that they're doing it, where they split up into the groups and it was make it made them easy to identify right when they're going oh, through, yeah, like, the fast totally. motion stuff. But it just felt yeah, out of no, I totally get what you mean. It, feel, it feels out of place. Yeah. Yeah, because Tatooine everything's just like dull and gray and like it's sandy everywhere. So like it's kind of unrealistic that these bikes would constantly be um clean well, that's also part of their yeah. story that i think like they're i think they have room to grow as, but because i i feel like they are going to be in future episodes now that they've kind of joined boba fett's like workforce i guess um yeah. b- because i think they, they like started out as like punk kids and now i think they're going to kind of have this arc of like growing and like having a job and taking on like more responsibilities i also i also really like how they like with those like punk droid bike kids they Mm -hmm. again are talking about what we talked about before um we talked about this many times with star wars but star wars is kind of you think of like the original star wars and it's like there's black and white like good and evil and i love how in these new shows they're again showing it's not as black and white there's a lot of gray like like this whole mini conflict with the water business person and then i love that interaction because i then reinforced uh boba fett's point of like him trying to rule with respect um, yeah, because if it was Fett, right? Well, one, th- or sorry, not it was uh, Boba. No, what the Django? Hut. Hut. I'm sorry, I was trying to think of, to think of the, um, Jabba. I don't know why I couldn't think of Jabba. Jabba? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, because it was Jabba, right? One, he wouldn't go there in person himself. Oh, hundred percent. No, he would have sent somebody else just to kill the gang, right? And then stole all the water. <laughs> and then stole all the water. So, yeah. It's yeah, nice but I, to see, I, yeah, I like see how that Boba listens to both sides of the story before coming to like his own conclusion um like exactly. he sees that i mean both parties were pretty kind of in the wrong like the greedy sales like business person it, it, it's, it's like a, it's a lot for water um and then the kids like shouldn't have stole it obviously um but are they gonna they don't have jobs so i don't know yeah so they're trying to make do what they can so i, I like his ruling there was just which is i the the kind of really the role of the dynamo yeah or daimyo how, how do you say daimyo it? Daimyo? Dyna guy. Dime- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said uh, Dynamo, so, and I'm like, wait, I'm just, I thought like the, the girl character from Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what did you think then, like, after we get these, oh, that's like, punk kids, what what do you think of um the black chrysanthemum coming in after the flashback, which we'll talk dude, about Dude, that was intense. Seeing him get pulled out, and then, like, the way, I, the I, water, like, dude, spilling like the, out. Also, and... again, um, Morrison being, like, thrown around, like, yeah. come on. Like, dude, yeah. dude, he's given his all. I mean, man. I feel like, like a lot of those blows would have, like, killed Killed him, him. yeah. <laughs> like, it was pretty maybe, maybe, brutal. Maybe there's, like, a delay out of getting, like, a back to tank where you're, like, so... Yeah, you, like, have some... It's, like, spawn protection. <laughs> it's, like, a buff. <laughs> like, yeah. <or> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I, yeah. I did I did like how, um after the fight, like, uh, Boba Fett, like, without hesitation, was, like, sent sent him to my back to tank, that Gamorrean guard that got, like, really, like, yeah. ch- chewed out, literally. <laughs> um... <laughs> So like, he, like I feel like like Jabba, for example, would never have even kicked off oh, twice. Never. But like, with well, that also Jabba thought, would never fit in the back to tank. True. Oh he my god! Like Imagine how to, big the tank to would have to be. It's a back to pool. <laughs> It'd have to be like that guy from Dune, you know. But oh yeah, <laughs> it's like just a giant pool, and he's just like his head pops out. It's like <laughs> the back to lake. They call it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, your hut is so fat. He needs a lake to, to be in back to. <laughs> 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 um it's interesting then like when the huts come back and like apologize like, apologize like, really 180 i wonder what they know now and what's gonna come of the future that like they they're like I'm, we're getting off world do you think they're actually getting off world or this is like a double bluff by no, them or they're I, no, serious? no no i think they are i think they yeah. are but i also here's the thing i also think that the rancor trainer is uh working for them really yeah, I but think he, he might try to so tell the genuine i know I feel, he does well, but there's that I one think, moment where he's like he'll be back you know as like what does well, he I mean think, by that? I think actually that's a good point. If that's the case, and, and the Rancor trainer like Danny Trejo is working for the Huts, maybe um, because Bo- he sees how I think he's kind of won over Boba like by how genuine and caring he is towards this creature. He's gonna see mm-hmm. Boba's a good person or seems like that. So like he might then like kind of turn on the Huts if he was hired by them, and maybe like he he'll kind of trade sides and, and actually like work with Boba. Like Boba will win his respect, which is what Boba's trying to do is w- lead by respect. So that might be. Uh, that would be a great arc, honestly, for that character. I think that'd be great, and the, the yeah. relationship between him and and uh, Boba. Um, I really did like. Sorry, yeah. you go ahead. No, I'm just saying. I think he's a their, their ace in the hole. But I feel like the Huts. Yeah. Um, 
I think they're being mostly honest where they're like, hey, there's another character coming in here uh, being the Pikes, most likely. And right. We, we don't want to be dealing with that. It's bad for business. So, yeah. It's going to be unique to see. I also kind of want to see if uh, Boba's going to fall back to like his connections with the Tuscans, because even though his camp kind of got scrapped, right? Right. I wonder if he still has a connection to any of them and like how that's going to work out. Because if he can, if he can like, I imagine seeing like Mos Espa, because it's like it's not like a giant crater, right? If you just saw like the whole perimeter like filled with like Tuscans like on the edge, yeah, like, the way the Native Americans would do it when they like crest over a hill on their yeah. horses, that would be crazy. That'd be that'd be like poetically, just like Lion King style. That's the stampede, just come down. Yeah, and they just <laughs> <laughs> just come in, <laughs> and like just... Mufasa, Mufasa, like falls off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be yeah. cool to see. Yeah. I, I did like, though, just back to the rank before we move on from that, I really yeah. liked, that was one of my favorite parts of this episode was the backstory and giving depth to the rancors, like, their depth and showing that they're not just, like, killing machines, they have, like, emotional connection. And do, do you think we'll see Bobo ride the rancor by the end of the series? Oh, we're gonna see him ride. So, it's we're actually, it's ride. really interesting. He says, like, I, I rode creatures hundreds, hundreds of times this big or whatever um mm-hmm. he, that's actually referring to people were saying the holiday special so that that's like officially like canon now i think it was well, when like, he was riding the sandworm i don't know i don't know what it was it was like a big it looked like a dinosaur like it was like a pars oh it, yeah yeah no i remember now. Daunt or something yeah. It, yeah. it was some ex- like cartoon that, but it, wasn't it, it, know, wasn't it was the cool. same skeleton of the dinosaur bones that we saw in like the original tridge that sounds you know what I mean? Like Correct. when there's like the stormtrooper walking I, yeah. by on the dune and then there's like this whole huge skeleton there. I think you're right. Also, I just thought it was really funny. Back to the huts like coming in and like apologizing. We talked about their litter last time. It's being carried by like 20 people that are clearly struggling. Yet they clearly have access to floating platforms that could easily support their weight because they bring the rancor in on that. So these like 20 guys are just lugging around the, the huts for no reason. Um, so I just thought that was really funny. Which I think too, like why? Other than just like stature but yeah culture. but also know, if but you like, think about it maybe the huts they're providing jobs for the economy that's 20 people employed that so maybe boba is a bad guy and isn't like helping well, that out also people. means it's 20 people not employed for the people that they for the uh thing that was holding the ranker right so like that could have been 20 more jobs yeah, but they didn't yeah, offer those true but that's like so, a one-time like freelance gig you know the, the huts need to go around all the time um that's true that's true but so I, I like to I, I like start deep diving into this and I, I would like to wa- I wonder like what what is like does that what is that job like how do you get that job of like carrying the litter like are there any perks like do you get I a four hundred one k slaves if I'm being honest Jake I no but I don't know like what if they're <laughs> not like what if they're like do, like they have benefits like dental and health insurance and maybe <laughs> maybe they climb through the ranks like maybe that's just, that's like an entry level position and then you can climb through the ranks and maybe maybe Bib Fortuna Jabba's right hand man started out as like his litter carrier and then he worked through the ranks and became his right hand man and then took over briefly as the daimyo <laughs> that's my <laughs> headcanon do, do we know how bib died by the way i forget if we, we've seen boba that. killed him when that was it was like the post credits of mandalorian that's like, right yeah, prepping yeah, yeah this season i like forgot this. <laughs> yeah i totally forgot that's that's on me um i'm just really curious about this career path and how viable an option it is. <laughs> You're like, can I carry on a giant fat slug? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that'd be cool. That'd be interesting. I wouldn't like that. Imagine the stories you tell. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, yeah, the stories of, like, all the stink and sweat that's coming down your way because, like, you're, you're like, the low corner But, dude, sometimes. what if you're carrying the, the litter and, and Princess Leia was, like, while Princess Leia was there? That's a perk of the job. Yeah, and then you see your boss die. Yeah, and then you're free. And then Princess Leia is the new daimyo, and you get to carry her around. It's a win-win. Oh, my gosh. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You might convince me there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've been talking about that for way too long, so let's back to the tank. Yeah, so what, what do you think happened to Black Chrysanthemum Chris- after that? Like, he kind of just, like, ran off stage right. I think we might see him again because he... <laughs> literally, though. <laughs> yeah, he literally was just like... He's like, like ran, right, I'm out. Ran away. Um... <laughs> I think um, we might see him again because Boba Fett like gave him his freedom, and I think he might respect that. So, what do you think? I don't know. Again, we've only seen this character like in the comics and like this, and he really seems just more like a cut through. He might like he might take his advice to heart, be like, "Okay, I'm not going to work for like uh, for what, slugs what was the anymore." Term? Yeah, slugs. It was like a Star Wars, slang. but like, suck yeah. for these suckers. So I don't know if he's going to come back and like help 
Well, it, I feel like it's going to happen either, anyway because like that's a lot of money to put in a costume like that. Just having in like two episodes like that. But it's Star but, like, Wars though. Like they would do that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I felt so, like his arc like this would it would be like I th- I thought we were gonna have one more fight before like they officially defeated Black Crescenton. Like I thought they were gonna like fight and then like something happened that like separated them and they'd barely get away and then like Black Crescenton was gonna come in a, a third time and then this would happen where they like officially beat him. Like I, yeah, I agree that like I feel like just two appearances like very quick is like not a lot so yeah yeah so i feel like he might be coming back but i don't know how what my point is i don't know how it's going to impact the story right so right yeah because we don't know like what's happening maybe he'll help him against the pikes or crimson dawn if they come in that'd be cool we, we, we didn't talk about the flashback so let's talk about that a bit like um like boba like we said like mm-hmm. loses his tuscan tribe that really sucks poor jimmy kimmel's nephew what the heck yeah uh, oh <laughs> Oh, Maybe he escaped. Dude. I, I was looking for like this sounds bad. I was looking for his corpse, Jimmy Kimmel's nephew's Tuscan corpse. Well, what if he was like one of the ones that like were like really close to the camera, so you can't really like is this like Maybe, the head? Let's like, hope. Let's like, hope not. Let's hope not. Maybe he escaped. It's like the one that's like on a freaking wooden pike, just like this. Well, I guess more like <laughs> a wooden this pike compared to the. That's ironic. <laughs> Anyway. What? <laughs> what were you saying? Well, no, I was just trying to say, like, I was trying to match the camera up with what I, with, like, my actual position. Yeah, for the, our audio was, listeners, Daniel was spinning around a chair. Yeah, I was like, spinning around my chair. But, <laughs> but no, like, ima- like, imagine that. And then, like, the, again, back on Jimmy Kimmel, like, the show, and, like, he gets his nephew on. He's like, so how did it feel dying as a Tusken Raider? And he's like, did I? <laughs> like, he's like, he's now like one of the Marvel people that like can't like reveal or spoil anything. He's like, that's not the uh, last you'll see Tuscan Raider 2. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think is interesting too about the Tuscans that not a lot of people know? What? Is that they're actually humans. Oh, really? They're not just like random things. I'm pretty sure that they're actually humans, but they just wear those masks as part of their culture. Because uh, so I'm pretty sure like... there, was a, there was a Tuscan Jedi. Um, yeah, I did. I did see that. I yeah. have heard of that. Yeah. People were theorizing so, we might see them but i don't know maybe that like we'll long them, haired yeah. maybe, maybe that long haired like tuscan girl was like force sensitive because she was pretty could be cool and good like compared to the others like fierce warrior so i don't know yeah too bad she's dead did we see her body too i thought i thought she was the one at the end of like the cutscene that like was on uh, the side and i don't I could know. be wrong a lot of their suits look the same but she looked like it was like her club no i'm pretty sure it was her because when he was doing the burn pile right he threw her club in okay yeah Oh, also, so the, after that flashback, like we see him riding on the the, the Bantha. Wampa. Is it a Wampa or is it a Bantha? I thought it was a Bantha. No, Wampas are on Hoth. Yeah, what the heck? I'm stupid. Yeah, it's a Bantha. Bantha Star Wars. Come on, man. You didn't know how. Uh... I swapped my big furry boys. <laughs> Calm down, okay? It's like Snuffleupagus. Oh, Wampa's more of a medium boy, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So when he's on that Bantha, like riding around, you were right. You mm-hmm. called that. Um, <laughs> you're right. So it's like a blink and you miss a cameo. And in the background, you see Pelimoto with her droids. She was the ship engineer in the Mandalorian. You said that she would be in it. Oh, wait, she, she was, was there? She was in it for like, we, like by those the stormtroopers helmets on spikes. She's be- walking behind them and you can see it. Went while oh. Boba Fett's riding the town. So I wonder if we'll see more of her, but she was there, so. Interesting. Hmm. I also wanted to comment that Danny Trejo, he has a lot of businesses out here in LA. Um, he has Trejo's Tacos, Trejo's Cantina, and Trejo's Coffee and Donuts. He has a lot of, and I went to the donut place and it was a pretty good donut. So yeah, I did culture. my research, everyone, good for this taste. episode. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's going to add like rank or like items to his menus now. Or, like Star Wars oh things to so, like his cantina. That'd be cool. Yeah, he has a cantina, literally has a cantina. That's cool. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so back yeah. in the present with that the chase sequence at the end with the biker gang and the mayor's like assistant. There, so the guy on the yellow bike actually crashes into a painting. And that was actually, yes. the painting was an original Ralph McQuarrie concept art for episode six uh, of Jabba. And they just literally took it and put it in Star Wars. The only thing they changed was they cropped out luke skywalker because obviously like java wouldn't yeah. want a picture of luke skywalker so but like i thought that was really cool that that, that like little easter egg you know i recognized that too i was like oh wait what's that doing there and then and then it got destroyed but i was like hey that, 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 that's a cool thing <laughs> the sacred text <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we see some more of the pikes this episode I mean, that's kind of what i wanted to talk about during the episode do you have predictions for next episode and the future of the series. That's the thing. Also, in the flashback, we saw Boba being civil with the Pikes, trying to do a trade deal. Yeah. But now it's like he's. 
I want to say wonder, scared of them, but like he's I, worried about them. You know. I wonder if we'll learn maybe something that like in the flashback happened that we haven't seen yet. That like something will happen that'll like change his outlook on them, which like explains why he's like acting this way to them now. So like something happened in between feel, those two I interactions. I feel like no. So in the pat in the flashbacks, right? Because he has he's pretty much like okay, these guys aren't gonna give me payment because he repaid these other guys for protection, right? So I mean, his only option is to like threaten or to kill the other guys who are offering protection, which is the gang with like the spire. The Kinton of. Striders are their name. Yeah, the Kinton Striders. So he's gonna have to kill them. I'm assuming, but when he does that, there's probably going to be some kind of like retaliation or whatever. I don't know. Which already we saw in this last episode, like where the Tuscans died, right? But in this case, he's already pissed off at them. So. Yeah. Well, actually, mm. no. That's that brings up a good point. Like he doesn't have his tribe anymore, right? So like. Is he going to try to find the other Tuscans now? Or is he going to... I wonder you know I mean? if we're going to see when he catches Fennec. And I also was wondering, like, I, I thought I thought the same thing if he's going to go, but I wonder if he's just going to go to his ship now. Because, like, I wonder if, like, he just can go to his ship. Because, like, I, don't, I have no idea where his ship is in these flashbacks. Because he flew to Tatooine to meet up with Jabba, and then, like, the barge exploded and all this happened. So, like, theoretically, his ship is just parked somewhere. Can he just go to it and like leave at whenever he wants or is he like and gets or at least like resupply up a little bit or or is it like lost somewhere or maybe he's not going back to the ship because he wants to like take care of business here with the pikes and get like revenge or uh, and again this is the thing i don't know his motive for the tuscans like again what, what what is he trying to do yeah that that in my opinion that is the biggest problem with this series so far we don't mm-hmm. have a clear idea of what his goals are. He's just going around being a badass, which is cool. <laughs> but like, he needs a motive to be a badass, right? Well, I, I think Bond, it might be building like, to it. Like, it, it, we might be building to like the flashback, and like, like it might all come clear at the end. And then, like looking back, it might be like, wow, that was amazing storytelling, kind of like the original Star Wars. Like, it started episode four, five, six. Like, we didn't know what the heck the clone wars were it was like a throwaway line and then we get the backstory and then once episode three comes together it's like oh my gosh everything connects so maybe it'll be something like that like where we'll the flashbacks and the present day will like finally link and connect and we'll be like oh my gosh that was amazing (laughs) or something that's true that could no that could totally be true uh i hope that is the case because there there is a lot of clarity that needs to be made up here like if there's some kind of event with like the pikes or even like this gang that will clear that up and be like oh this is why he's like making these choices now yeah I don't know, maybe he like lost a, a brother clone out of nowhere i don't know yeah <laughs> oh wait what about omega yeah you think she'll be in maybe is she she's an unaltered clone as well yes. right and yeah like, so she's not gonna be aging quickly so so she's probably a little younger she's younger than Boba. She, she's gonna be younger than him if she came in they had some kind of connection and then, like, something happens to her. Maybe she's, like, the head of the Pikes or, or the Syndicate or something. And then, like, they'll go head-to-head and then realize they're both clones or, or, like, both offspring of Jango Fett somehow. Like, maybe they'll... Be, but maybe they'll be put at odds at first. And then that would be Yeah, no, I think it might be something like that where they're put at odds at first, you know? But I don't think she's leading, like, the Pikes or something like that. Because, like... Yeah, no. Nah, but, like, maybe she's, like, in cahoots or something. Especially like with all the time with her brothers and the Bad Batch. Like, she wouldn't be But, hey, like a lot of... It's been now since we've seen the Bad Batch. Like, that was end of episode three it's been like 30 years now a lot can change that's true but that'd be interesting to see if it was something like that also that was really interesting so the leader of the pikes we see in that flashback um he's played by phil lamar who actually voiced bail organa and kit fisto and some other characters in the clone Wars series and he was also one of the guys that caught peter parker in spider-man 2 after the train stopped like oh, one of the first yeah, people the train, that like yeah. caught him <laughs> um and i think it's, it's ironic because now he's mad that his spice train got stopped, so we'll come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for stopping my train. It's like it's again the multiverse theory, man. In one universe, he's he's happy the train's saved by stopping, and this one he, he's getting screwed over because the train stopped. Because he's an alien that <laughs> needs water. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, so I think next episode we might see him going in the fl- in the flashback after the Kinton Striders. I also hope we see more with the mayor and like who's behind everything because I really don't know. And maybe we'll see what, why the Huts were scared and everything and like the Pikes more backstory. Um, my my grandfather I was talking to him about this. He also thinks that Black Kersantin Black Kersantin will come that's back. A weird game. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree. And yeah, so I really also hope we get more 
like a, like a training montage or something with like Boba with the Rancor and Danny Trejo. Like I think that'd be yeah. really cool to explore that a bit more. Mm-hmm. But also if they don't do it right, I think it could be slow and like slow down momentum. So I think it would be really cool because we if if we do see like a training montage of like Boba willing to ride the Rancor, if it's kind of like mirrored with Boba teaching the Tusken Raiders how to use the speeders, like that would be some cool oh, yeah, that'd duality. Be cool. Yeah between the two of learning how to ride it's like po- it's like poetry <laughs> like George Lucas it's like poetry it rhymes you know that'd be really cool <laughs> do, you, do you think Bubba's gonna eventually kill the mayor I don't know it depends on if because- the mayor's like actually evil I, I, he seems like a spineless goofball uh, you just want to see a fight with the mayor with the, the thing <laughs> his neck thing. well no okay yeah that, that'd be cool but no like I like because here's the thing right if he killed the mayor he could technically appoint his own mayor and have them be a puppet for himself you know and yeah. then he could then use Maybe that Fennec? to have leverage over the other. Uh, that could two be Fennec's arc. Like Fennec started out that as like, this true. assassin that owed her life to Boba, and then she be- becomes like a leader and is learning under Boba's wing how to be like a more diplomatic leader that's not always going after like violent after solutions. <laughs> and then she could be promoted to mayor. Maybe that'd be really cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. I oh also I had a thought interesting a thought so you know who also dealt with the the pikes and um like spice that we've seen before uh, solo. Well, th- yeah, but also um, uh, Ahsoka and Trace and Rafa uh, Martez oh, in that no, that's Clone right, Wars yeah. arc. So maybe yeah, we'll yeah. see them in live action, and this might honestly tie into the Ahsoka series. So maybe we'll see those characters in the future, like Trace or Rafa. It, it might be. I think that would be really cool if we saw them That'd in a future really cool episode, and very possible because they've been tied up heavily with the the Pikes before even Clone Wars. So yeah, man, I'd be totally down to have Ahsoka come back. Yeah, I, I want to know what's going on with the timeline too, man. Because there's, there's the whole theory, you know, this theory about like Ahsoka being saved because of like the end of what happened at Rebels, which I didn't see yet. I just need to go watch Rebels. But then yeah, like, there's now Rebels. this new timeline because Ahsoka's <laughs> oh, yeah. alive during yeah, Mando. Yeah, there's like a time travel yeah. thing, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe, it'll, maybe this will it'll all come together in a neat little bow. <laughs> I hope it'll so. A neat little I bow. So. Buh. Buh. Fet. <laughs> And on that note, that's all I had for the episode. Is there anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> no, nah, man, I think that's pretty much it. All right. Well, ready for the patron shout outs? Yeah, hit me with them. Cue the episode music. Boosh, got patron Lori, Frank, Rick, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for pledging the tier. If you can see the shout out, if you want to support us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. You get episodes early, special benefits, cool perks, um, all that jazz and more. The audio episode comes out early. Yeah, if you would like to leave a review out over on Apple Podcasts or leave a comment on YouTube, we shout them out. In this segment, we don't have any new ones, which is totally cool, totally tubular. Um, but yeah, also keep an eye out. Um, I've been busy lately with things, but like I'm, I'm working on getting a script together and like making an announcement video about our whole like John Favreau mission to get him on the podcast that we teased a couple, or maybe it was last episode or a couple episodes ago. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, that is everything I had. Anything else you want to add, Daniel? Nah, man, that's pretty much it. All right. Um, yeah. Wait for the outro. Yep. Tell me when. When. We just talked about whatever we want to talk about, and now we're done. Thank you so, so much for listening again. Like we mentioned up top, make sure you check out Daniel's links below and uh, the work he's doing on his game. His VR game is yeah, really awesome. If you guys in their VR or game design or anything like that, uh, definitely go check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Yep. Bye.